I am Eric Klump. I am the MC for tonight's event. Um, apparently, John Murphy and Sal Capaccio were booked up for tonight's, so it's me. <laughs> but as a lifelong resident of New Fame, someone that competed with this jersey on and now teaches and coaches in the district, I am humbled and excited to be at the celebration that's long overdue. And now that we've broken new ground for future Panthers to leave their mark, what a perfect time to honor the very best here at Newfane that have already left theirs, that have coached, served, and competed at Newfane at the highest level. And now it's time to put them in their rightful place in our Hall of Fame. So at this time, I'd like to bring up Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Michael Baum. It's an honor to be here this evening, to have the opportunity to uh, meet with you and, and be part of our first ever induction of our, our New Fane Central School District Athletic Hall of Fame, which is a, a wonderful, wonderful thing that, as Eric said, long, long overdue. Um, I do want to take a moment to say thank you on behalf of myself and the Board of Education to the members of the Hall of Fame Committee. There are so many of them that are here tonight that, that if, if it hadn't been for their hard work, their dedication, their perseverance, we wouldn't be here this evening and have this opportunity to honor these wonderful athletes um, and contributors to our athletic program. So thank you very much to all of the Hall of Fame uh, committee members. And Eric's, as Eric had mentioned, I mean, wow, what, what a week for the New Fame community. What a week for New Fame athletics. You know, last, last Saturday we cut the ribbon on our brand new stadium. Last Friday, one of our most uh, most impressive programs managed to get our first win in the new stadium, our field hockey program, a, a program that doesn't get nearly as much recognition as they should. But the field hockey program posted the first win ever for Panthers in the stadium and we're incredibly proud of that. Um, and then, you know, yesterday, in our high school, we celebrated our first induction of our distinguished alumni uh, Hall of Fame members. Um, and we're very, very proud to be able to start that Hall of Fame as well. You know, this morning in the paper, a wonderful article about our cross-country program. I mean, things are just looking really, really great for New Fan, and what a perfect way to cap these last couple of weeks with the, the first ever Hall of Fame induction dinner, and, and I'm just thrilled to be a part of it. Now, the, the feather in that cap will be a football victory over Wilson tomorrow night. Chuck, wherever you are, there you are in the back there. So. You know, I especially want to welcome in and thank all of the honorees and their families for being here. It's, it's just so exciting. I've been in education a long time, 34 or 35 years now. When I started my career way back when, I did a little coaching myself, some football and wrestling. After I got into administration, I, I put on the stripes alongside Mr. Conley, did a little wrestling officiating. I was actually out there on the mat a couple of times to see Ryan wrestle. Everybody always loved to rep his matches. All you had to do was say, take down and escape. You didn't need to know anything else. Just take down and escape 15 times and you were done. He, he was so easy to rep that he even let Jim do it a few times, right, Mr. Conley? <laughs> but, you know, tonight tonight we're here to celebrate. Celebrate the past uh, 80 years of New Fane Athletics, New Fane Panther Athletics. Celebrate the future with our new stadium and all the improvements we have moving forward. Um, on behalf of, of everyone in the New Fane community, thank you for all that you've done to support the programs. Thank you for being here tonight. And to tonight's inductees, congratulations. All right, please welcome our athletic director of New Fane High School, Mr. Chancellor Guino. I think Eric and Mr. Bob have covered all the speeches. I think I'm done. <laughs> So, I am Chance Polino, New Fane's Athletic Director. On behalf of the New Fane Athletic Hall of Fame Committee, the New Fane School District, and the New Fane Community, I'd like to welcome everyone to New Fane's first Athletic Hall of Fame ceremony. Last week, the opening of the stadium marked a new chapter in New Fane Athletics. 
This week we get down into some of the greatest chapters in New Bay Athletic history. Having an Athletic Hall of Fame has always been a thought and a wish for New Bay to have. Thanks to our Athletic Hall of Fame committee, which was started two years ago, and support from our superintendent and our board of education and community, that dream has become a reality. The New Bay Athletic Hall of Fame seeks to recognize outstanding individual athletes, long tenured coaches, teams that achieved the highest level, and those who have made important and valuable contributions to New Bay Athletics in other capacities. Also, thank you to the Hall of Fame Committee for working tirelessly to make sure tonight in the Hall of Fame will go from a dream to reality. Our committee is made up of Mike Heitzerider, Henry Gerson, Bill Clark, Bill Nyinglinger, Mary, Mary Halen, Chen Gretz, Jim Weber, Jim Conley, Chuck Nagel, Kevin Klump, Eric Klump, and Katie Stenton. Thank you. And also, thank you to the generous donation from the Friendship Memorial, which helped pay for the dinner ceremony. The Friendship Memorial was created in memory of a former of former Panther, Steve Hesch, Mike Mussolini, Eric Loans. If you're interested in making any type of donation to this group or the New Fame Athletic Hall of Fame, Please feel free to contact Jim Weber. To all the inductees, thank you for your dedication and commitment to Duke Bay Athletics. The 2022 Hall of Fame class consists of people that have re relocated all over the country since attending Duke Bay. It is an honor and a privilege to welcome you all home in New Bay. Please enjoy the night and thank you again. Well, I'd first like to welcome uh, Jim Weber to. Oh, you're already here. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, very excited for everyone that is sitting and everyone who's standing here tonight. And uh, it is with great pleasure for me tonight to introduce, in my estimation, the most decorated student athlete to come out of New Bay High School. He's a slam dunk first first ballot Hall of Famer. Ryan, you know, can you come up, please? Class of 2002. The most accomplished wrestler in Western New York history, Ryan wrestled varsity in New Fame for six consecutive years. He's a six-time Niagara Leagues League champion, a four-time Section 6 champion, a three-time high school All-American, and uh, in 2003, he was a team member of the USA wrestling team. Dream team, excuse me. And he holds New Fame school records, a number of them, but I only can put a few down here. They're the most wins at 240 and the most state championships with three. Um, he also holds the Western New York Section 6 wins record, again at 240, and is three wins shy of having the most wins ever for a high school wrestler. Uh, Ryan went on to have a very successful collegiate career at the Ohio State University and the University at Buffalo. He attained All-American honors as a junior by placing fifth in the University Nationals. Ryan currently is the CEO of a Florida-based <coughs> Compassion Behavioral Health. It's a mental health and addiction center. And he has a beautiful wife and three young children, two young children, Cruz and Sloan. Hopefully not foreshadowing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Needle, I think, we want to see a few words. First, I would like to uh, thank everybody here for uh, putting this together. This is, uh, you know, it's great to be back. Uh, it feels it feels amazing to be back here, see some familiar faces. Um, you know, so I'm really excited that the you know New Fame Athletic Department School Board um, was able to do this. So next, um, I would like to thank. My coaches, um, you know, in the sport of wrestling, being a coach is, you know, one of the most selfless things and requires, you know, abundance amount of time and dedication. Um, and, you know, my coach, Mr. Lang, you know, he dedicated his life to the sport and I couldn't be more grateful to be, you know, part of a team, um, you know, someone that, that he coached, 
and you know, I've always looked up to him um, and his dedication, his love for the sport, his love for the athletes, and uh, the time he put in. Um, without him, I think Green Wrestling, you know, would was you know with his involvement, Green Wrestling, you know, became to be one of the top schools in the section um, and in the state for that matter. Um, so, you know, a lot goes out to him and uh, Wife Gretchen, she was always there. Um, Doug Ames, who was uh, another coach of mine, um, I've had, uh, my, my father was, was a coach, um, you know, so, you know, coaching, you know, puts, in, a lot goes into it and their their involvement really made a made an impact on me. So without them, you know, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't be here for itself. Um, it really taught me. It taught me to have a passion, to find a passion. And I think a lot of us go through life and you know don't really experience that emotion of finding a passion and developing your life towards. Um, it's a passion that's almost becomes an obsession. And you know, through that, it's you know, taught me characteristics, uh, work ethic, uh, humility, goal setting. Um, it taught me so many life skills from a very young age. And you know, it's not something you can teach. It's something that is developed. And you know, I'm grateful I was able to develop that you know, from a young age. Um, you know, it's carried on with me, you know, through life. I apply those, those principles in my uh, professional career. Um, the dedication, you know, my work ethic, I treat it the same way. Um, consistency in, you know, everything that, you know, I put in wrestling, I put in my life. So, you know, without that, and understanding that and uh, developing those skills through the years, you know, it's it's something that I tr am truly grateful for, grateful for being a part of. And it really wasn't until I was older until I really understood that. Um, you know, I went through my career and it almost became something that was um, natural for me because when I was young, that was something that I just developed and became a habit. Um, but looking back as I'm older, I understood and now I can really reflect on what it did and the emotions that it instilled in me. And lastly, you know, I want to thank the sport of wrestling. It gave me some of the greatest moments in my life. I was able to travel the world, travel the United States, see things that I probably would never see in my lifetime. Meet people, build relationships, you know, things that I probably would never have done. Um, you know, the sport of wrestling allowed me to do that. It allowed me to travel with my family. You know, this was you know, a family sport. My parents were so supportive. They would, you know, give their last, you know, resource to get me to a tournament, you know, in, in Ohio. And, uh, you know, I specifically remember when I was, when I was young, I was probably nine or ten, and uh, it's kind of a joke. But my father asked me if I would rather go to a, a, a national tournament. I think it was like Tulsa, Oklahoma, or something, or go to Disneyland. And you know, as a kid, you would think I'd choose Disneyland, but I chose Tulsa, Oklahoma, without even thinking about it. So you know. My family traveled with me, you know, we, we became closer and it brought my family together. 
So I'm forever grateful for that. So I appreciate everyone for coming, and I'm honored to be part of the first Hall of Fame uh, ceremony. And uh, I thank the school board again, the town of Newfane, has always been supportive. Um, and uh, you know, it feels good to come back and, and, and see some familiar faces. So thank you. I'm here to introduce Kimberly Woods Matina. If you would kindly come up, it'd be greatly appreciated. the track and cross country coaches and it didn't take me very long to be one of those coaches to see Kim Wood and say my kids need to do that how do I make them do that and in a weird twist of fate one of the top runners I had was a, a girl by the name of Kimberly Burris distance run that is she was walking through Walmart wearing her varsity jacket that had a lot of patches and Kim's husband stopped her and said do you run a new thing something along those lines and a conversation started to occur and uh, Mr. Matina said, maybe you've heard of my, my wife, Kimberly Wood. Maybe thinking that, maybe that she did or didn't. Um, in a turn of fate, my athlete goes, uh, yeah, I know exactly what that is. Um, well, when you're thinking of distance running at Newfane, Kim Wood would be one of the first names that comes to mind. At one point, she held the school records of 100, 200, 400, 1500, 3200, I'm not really sure what's left, um, relays, oh, she was in that as well. Um, she also held league records. At one point, you might have thought, well, that's just because we switched from meters to yard, or from yards to meters, but uh, that's not the case because two of those school records, the 400 and the 800, still stand to this day. 59.1 seconds in the 400 and 219.1 in the 800. Okay, well, that's track. Well, is that it? Uh huh. Cross country, she excelled at that sport as well. The girls' XC program started league competition right around 1980, and it didn't take long for Kim to have an impact on the sport. She was a member of multiple league team championships, a sectional team runner-up in 81-82, topped that off with a sectional championship in 80, sorry, runner-up in 81-83, topping it off with a sectional championship in 82, um, and helped the Lady Panthers to a third-place finish at the New York State championship for class B. Um, individually she was a league champion as well as the league record holder in cross country at the time. She had league championships, sectional championships, and topped that off with what today is still the top finish in the state meet by a boy or girl runner, which is a second place finish where she was in class B and a time of 1935. You know, at that time that was the highest finisher. We didn't have our state champions then. Like we do now, second place was the best that we had and it still stands to this day. Um, Kim Wood was truly ahead of her time in distance running and um, set the highest of high ceilings that many athletes are still trying, still trying to strive to achieve. Congratulations. Congratulations. My name is Henry Kirsten. I've been uh, in the. There we go. There we go. All right. I've been uh, around for a while now, 30 years uh, here, and uh, coached a lot of kids over the years, and uh, I've been wonderful. But uh, this uh, person, Brianna Still, has been uh, in, in our minds and our hearts for many years as a state champion. Uh, Brianna started her group, uh, scholastic athletic career at Newfane when she entered seventh grade. Over a six year athletic career, she was awarded 14 varsity letters, and you would think that'd be enough to get into this um, this little small um, group of people in, uh, in, in the inaugural uh, induction. Uh, Brianna, you want to come on up? outdoor track and field, indoor track and field, soccer, and basketball. However, it was her involvement in the pentathlon that she focused on and excelled to her highest level. Brianna made four appearances at the New York State Division II Outdoor Track and Field Championships in the pentathlon, at which she won first place twice in 2005 and 2007. Her two other appearances were not bad either. She placed second in 2006, and as a freshman in 2004, while she was still learning the event, she took third place. 
The highest level a New York State Scholastic Track and Field athlete can compete at is the New York State Federation meet. This is a combined meet which includes all public high schools from Division I and II, as well as private and parochial schools. Brianna was twice the runner-up for this meet in 2006 and 2007. On her way to compete at these top-level New York State championships, Brianna had to compete and win the Section 6 Division II pentathlon four times in 2004, 2005, 2006, and 2007. It is not known by many, but at one time, New Fane had an indoor track and field team. Lucky for Brianna, she was able to use the winter months in her preparation to become a pentathlon champion she was in the spring track and field seasons. In 2006, Brianna was selected as Section 6 Indoor Track and Field's Most Valuable Player. And she also placed third in the high jump at the New York State Indoor Track and Field Meet. In 2007, Brianna was selected as the Niagara Police Athletic League Female Athlete of the Year. She was also selected as the All Western New York Good Sport Athlete of the Year in 2006 and 2007. Brianna is still the Niagara Elite's pentathlon record holder with 3,349 points and holds Newfane records in the high jump, long jump, and pentathlon. In 2004, Brianna competed in the Junior Olympics and was ranked 8th in the nation in the heptathlon. Brianna's athletic career didn't end when she graduated from high school. She attended and competed for the University of Tulsa where she once again went to work on setting records and collecting eight letters. She was selected for second team All-Conference USA as a freshman in indoor, track and, indoor and outdoor track and field. She was a senior when she was selected for the first team All-Conference USA. Brianna graduated from the University of Tulsa holding three school records. She currently holds the university's heptathlon record of 5,158 points and she, when she graduated, was ranked 29th in the nation. Today, Brianna lives with her wife, Julie, and their dog, Cooper. She currently works as a cardiac nurse for South, South Buffalo Mercy. Brianna, congratulations. Majorly because since I was in sixth or seventh grade, um, I had gym coaches, Everybody that you see in this room, I pretty much remember and recognize. Uh, the biggest thing is, that's part I came from a small town, and everybody was there to support me. Everybody was always cheering for me. Uh, every coach I had gave me helpful advice to make me better and stronger um, for other competitions that I had later. Um, I just want to thank New Fame for everything that you guys did to support me. Um, thank even people that you don't even think you would thank, like. Uh, Kim Wood, you were a very big idol to all the girls on the track team. We always wanted to try to beat your records or even try to get close. We had no idea who you are until I didn't, until tonight. So we wanted to meet you. And then Ryan Needle, I didn't know you, but I remember you running in garbage bags with the other wrestlers. And you didn't know who I was, but uh, I knew who you were. And it's just, just having this Hall of Fame makes it other athletes want to try harder and be better. So thank you guys for throwing this, and thank you for everything you guys have done for me to, to make me where I got to today. So thank you. Letters. Four in varsity baseball, four varsity letters in football, two in basketball, and two JV letters in basketball. In baseball, Nick was all league four years in a row, starting catcher for four years. He pitched a perfect game as a freshman. That record stands today in the NL League. It's the only one in the NL League or at Newfoundland he's ever accomplished. He was a cleanup hitter for four years. He led the team in batting, average. Runs batted them and home runs. Two of those home runs broke, broke the window. Of which we're sending him a bill. <laughs> 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 
He was the first New Fame player to sign a major league baseball contract with the New York Mets in 1961. Is that right, boss? And he played for the Auburn Mets in 1962 here in New York State. He was team captain for three years. In football, he was a four-year starter at fullback and middle linebacker. Four years for all league. Led the team in rushing touchdowns during four years. Also, gained 237 yards rushing in one game. He was also the punter, the extra point kicker, and he kicked off. When did the other 11 players do? I don't know. His senior year was, they were undefeated with one tie. That tie was a 13 to 13 tie with Roy Hart. No Rams. <laughs> Also, he scored 33 points. Excuse me. He also scored four touchdowns in a game more than once. So at this time, we'd like to induct Mr. Nick Casanova. By the way, he's my cousin. <laughs> Quite an honor, uh, especially being the first uh, Hall of Fame function. Uh, everybody would really realize what sports does for young kids just starting in high school. It molds you for the rest of your life. And I'm so happy for what's going on with the school, what you guys have done. The school so appreciated. It's going to go and pay dividends for years and years and years. So thank you so much for that. Um, Jimmy was talking about the football and seeing you guys got a game tomorrow, or Saturday. Yeah. I just want to go back and just give you this statistics for this football team our senior year. The first, first game that we played, that year was against Wilson, which is playing tomorrow. We beat them 26 to 7. The next game was a game that we ended up tying, which was 13 to 13. The game after that, we played Parker. We beat them 40 to nothing. The game after that, we played Star Point. We beat them 40 to nothing. The game after that, we played Niagara Wheatfield. We beat them 20 to nothing. The next game after that, we played Akron. We beat them 33 to nothing. The last game of the year, we played Medina, who New Bay had never beaten. We beat them 32 to 13. That team scored 204 points that year against opponents scoring 33. We outscored our opponents by 171 <laughs> points. We had awesome athletes that went four years of school, baseball, football, basketball, and New Fame has continued that tradition right through. I followed a lot and so proud of everybody. Thank you so much. I'm here to induct Joe Grabowski. If you could kindly come on up. Yes, sir. So uh, my senior year and my junior year, I was on Star Point, and I remember being at Star Point and going to basketball games. And one of the games was Star Point versus New Fame, where Joe was coaching against um, I guess my alma mater. Uh, previously, the night before, New Fame got the win, and it was a heated battle. I mean, everything you see in the basketball games: cheering, scoring, you know, screaming, technicals, timeouts, all occurred. And I was sitting in the study hall the next day, and uh, my study hall teacher goes. That coach from Newfane, I don't like him. <laughs> but at the time, I, I, I looked and said, I go, why is that? Well, because they won. Well, that 
that is a, a long-standing tradition for Joe. Joe has been inducted to the Hall, Newfane Athletic Hall of Fame for his service as the varsity girls basketball coach. Joe was one of the first coaches to recognize the importance of year-round training in his sport. He was able to identify talent and get his players involved in AAU teams and Empire State games to further bolster their team's play during the season. His philosophy, which was quoted in the newspaper, was very simple and is but very highly effective as one of top, uh, Section 6 top basketball coaches for many years. His quote was, defense is number one, team speed and execution are among the close seconds. During his coaching career, he coached multiple all-Western New York players. He had four 1,000-point scorers, and he had athletes that went on to play at college. He had four Division I scholarship earners, and during his coaching career through the AAUs, he even coached an athlete who went on to participate in the WNBA. Joe set the standard in New Britain for a winning program. He had 10 league championships for women's basketball in a 12-year period between 1981 and 1992. At least six of those teams went undefeated in basketball in the Niagara Orleans League competition. Um, but, but this during this impressive run, his teams had five Section 6 Class B2 championships and one New York State Final Four competition. This success also extended to his teams at the AAU and Empire State Games, where he had two gold medals and a, a silver at the Empire State Games, where the winning, where the winning coaching kind of tradition continued through Western New York teams. Joe Grabowski, congratulations on being inducted into the New Fame Hall of Fame. Uh, when I first found out about this award, my son Michael had told me, and I said, well, do I have to give a speech? And he says, you, you got three minutes. I said, well, put me towards the front because it'll take me two to get up here. <laughs> but I've got a few notes here I really don't want to forget anybody. If I can get them out. Okay. You know, there's many reasons that I'm standing up here, and I had little to do with it. I had little to do with it. <laughs> Over 20 years, I was blessed with hundreds of amazing athletes at Newfane. Practices were very, very difficult. And there's a couple of girls back there that can attest to that. A lot of sweat, sometimes even tears. But we managed to learn that nothing good comes out of life without hard work. Thank you, girls, all of you. I am here because of you. To my athletic director, Jim Conley. Jim, we were at the forefront of girls' athletics. And our pursuit to make them equal has finally come true. Thank you for all your dedication and help to the Lady Panther basketball team. I appreciate that, Jim, very, very much. There are two people that I would like to mention that weren't teachers, but dedicated thousands, thousands of hours for our Lady Panthers basketball team. They were Curtis Jefferson and Pete Hahn. Every practice, every game, they're not being paid. Thank you so, so much, Pete and CJ. I'll never forget what you had done for our program. To my wife, Rebecca, not easy being the wife of a coach. Very difficult. Or the husband of a coach. Um, always make sure that after a long day of practice and some away games that where you didn't get home till 11, 12 at night, always made sure there was something 
on the table when I got home. Thank you, Becky. My love for SpaghettiOs and mac and cheese <laughs> has come from you. <laughs> You know you're growing old when you realize that two of tonight's inductees were in your fifth grade class. <laughs> congratulations, Ryan. Congratulations, Kim. And congratulations to all the other inductees tonight. Thank you very much. capped off by a big win tomorrow night and uh, Panther Field against the Lake. So, since my playing days in, at New Fame, I've always known Marty to be the sports announcer for football, girls, and boys basketball games. Now, it wasn't until my coaching days began that I was able to get to know Marty on a personal level and call him my friend. I really appreciated his encouragement, his support through all the seasons, good and bad. And my day would always get better, Marty, when I got that text message from you saying, hey, good luck tonight. Finished with no Panthers. Always the best. So I mentioned Marty's my friend. I've known him from working at the school. Um, I got the honor of sitting next to him running the basketball clock. Well, he, he actually ran it and told me what to do. <coughs> made me uh, look pretty good. But um, I had to talk to him a couple days ago and get some background information on Marty. And, uh, and basically I found out that, that he graduated from Barker High School. Amen. <laughs> which I had heard, but I didn't believe. But, uh, but learning about that, I also found out that he played three years of football four years of basketball, and four years of baseball, graduating back in 1955. He also mentioned his fondest memories are on the athletic field, especially competing against Newfane in football. <laughs> After high school, Marty served our fine country in the Navy from 1955 to 1958. Marty made the move to Newfane in 1966 and thank God for that, as he served our little town in many volunteer positions ever since. So I could say Marty's thousands of hours volunteering, but it might be more. But they include serving over 55 years at Miller Hose Fire Department, serving for over 45 years for our fine New Fanes Lions Club, almost a decade volunteering with the new Will Rand football and cheer, youth football and cheer. Serving for 30 years on the New Fane Sports Boosters, and he's been our fine voice of the New Fane Panthers for 30 years. Now I know I speak for many of New Fane's past, present athletes, coaches, parents, and community members when I say, we are so truly grateful for everything Marty Hornberg has done for our town and our school district. The voice of the Panthers will never be forgotten. Thank you, Marty, and congratulations on being inducted into the first class of New Fane's Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame 
that has brought us to this evening uh, of celebration. Just despite, you know, the obstacles that have been over the last two to three years. I'd also like to thank the superintendent, uh, Mike Bauman, the New Fane School Board of Education, plus any and all others that were involved in the capital project and the sports complex, complex development. A thank you too to our school district taxpayers for their support of this project is also in order. Uh, I sat through two austerity budgets. It's not a pretty picture. So we need the support of those taxpayers. We have talked the talk. We have finally walked the walk. So it's been a long time coming. To the Hall of Fame committee to be to be considered and selected to be inducted with the other distinguished New Fame inductees is an honor I will not forget. For those who may not know, know, and Chuck has already explained it, I was a graduate of uh, Parker Central School in 1955, and I always did look forward to playing uh, against the New Fame teams. And I do have a story, if I have time uh, to say it. Uh, playing New, New Fame back in the day, you had a big center. His name was Bill Britt. He was six foot 13. <laughs> uh, Dick Herman who you may know as a uh, purveyor of good spirits here in New Faith, and I played on the varsity team. When we came to New Faith, or New Faith came to Parker, uh, we had a way of trying to control, you know, your, your coaches always have a way of going against your big man or your most potent opponent, kind of thing. Anyways, uh, Dick and I would kind to uh, uh, coordinate our efforts. When Bill would post up, uh, you know, on the thing, I could slide over, Dick would slide over. Usually what I did was I would grab Bill's shorts. I mean, those were the short shorts that they used to, they used to wear back in the day. Kind of prevented Bill from moving around too fast or jumping too high. Kind of Our other little tactic was to prevent, to prevent him from jumping. We stand on his foot. <laughs> the first item, grabbing his shorts, uh, Harry Blakesley was the referee, and he caught me a couple of times doing that. Blew the whistle. Uh, he says, Hornberg, do that again, you're gone. Off the court. Well, we got retaliation because we'd step on the foot, Bill's foot. He would shove us. They'd have to call a follow on Bill, so paybacks are done. <laughs> that was our opportunity. Dick, by the way, was only about six foot one. Uh, if I tend to ramble a little bit, that this may be because I turned 85 this past September. It also may be because uh, on November 26th, uh, I'm celebrating 62 years of those 85 years with the same woman, my wife, Brenda, who couldn't appear tonight. <laughs> so, uh, we had five kids. We had uh, four, the blunt, 
or five kids. <laughs> all, all of them graduated from New Fane High. And I think a couple of them, by the skin of their teeth, and the grace of their teachers. <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't uh, say thank you to Jim Conley, to Doug Ames. Uh, Jim took me off the street. Uh, Doug Ames uh, also assisted, kept me off the street, and allowing me to do uh, what I did here at New Fame. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed uh, all of that time. Some of the other people that I was involved with, Mary Halen. Uh, oh, she, she provided me with all the lineups for, uh, and believe me, that, that was a job, uh, just getting lineups from all the other schools. Mary, thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, you know, in keeping the clock uh, for the games was really something. And I've got to reach out to uh, Jamie Perup, Petrowski, Don Burns, and Katie Stepman. And uh, they, they kept, uh, kept the clock and did everything. Uh, it was just great. The Booster Clubs, the Booster Club that we have on the thing. Some of you will remember maybe the booster uh, $10,000 raffle parties that we had, uh, you know, were a lot of fun. Bottom line, Tatachi and Bob Capen, who back then uh, in the day told me to get involved. I want to thank them. I'll have to get the paper apart. Honor for me to be included with you. Dick Lane. And I'd like to take possibly a moment in remembrance of Dick uh, at this time. Thank you. I mean, Dick's legacy speaks for itself. Ryan Needle, I still read your signs as we go up and down the highway. I was perusing through some of my stuff and I ran across a Newfane article. Or I shouldn't say Newfane article, it was a lot for article, but it showed you and Dick Lang, and I think this is when you went to, and won the states. So I have that as a memorabilia. Joe, Joe, where are you? Joe, I'd love to announce one of your ball games. <laughs> You're a legend. Uh, Brianna Steele, uh, congratulations on you, and Kim, you too, I think you have already had, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were already on the Wall of Fame, and I think that was on the garage at the middle school when they had the records printed up on those walls. I think, I don't know, Jim, they didn't paint that old, did they? They're still there. Yeah. Yeah. Still there. I think it's still there. Yeah. 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 Kim, uh, I don't know. I think we've got names in common. Right? Yep. Yep. I'm sure do. Yep. Uh, Nick? Uh, 
Uh, I played against another Casanova by the name of Tommy. And I know he was a fierce competitor. So, okay. And the 47 48 bas baseball team, I'm sorry. Uh, I have a picture of the. Well, let me ask you a question. This is a trivia question. <laughs> How many people remember the Lot 47 company that was down on British Virginia? Keep your hand up. Do you remember the Lot Fort Felt baseball team? Got one hand. 1953, that baseball team came into being. I think uh, there were some of the members on there that, uh, you know, uh, I was just when they won when the team won the championship uh, back there in 47, 48. I was a mere lad. Uh, 10 years old. Uh, I was bad boy and shaving flies for the Barker Vets baseball team back then. And I'm sure some of the people that were on that team, uh, you know, we our paths crossed someplace along the line. But going back to that 19. Uh, 53 baseball team in Lockport felt there was Bob Capen, Bill Bradle, Don Keller, Dewey Snore, Leroy General Phipps, Kenny Smith, Russ Dickinson, Gene Taylor, Kern Vincent, Les Fields, my two brothers and myself. So some of those were new fame players. I made the com comment earlier, I think, about it being a long time in coming. I was, I was reminded of this while looking through uh, our photo album, album for pictures of my uh, daughter Anne that my granddaughter wanted for her wedding uh, collage this past October, October 1st. I ran across a picture of me uh, on the second floor of a story. Uh, it was a wooden concession stand a building that stood on the west side of the football field. The third floor was for coaches. And you gained access to those floors by an inside staircase. The building mysteriously burnt down <laughs> one season prior to an opponent, opponent's game. The scuttlebutt, okay, on the street at that time pointed at an opposing uh, team west of the country. Needless to say, it became a cold case. <laughs> Last page. <laughs> that included a rubberized track, two new sections of bleachers, and a press box on the east side of the football field. Along with the Booster Club mobile uh, concession stand. Then Friday Night Lights came the new thing. Thanks to Jeff Brown and the Booster Club, lights were con uh, constru construction type telescopic uh, units run by diesel. There was standing room only. 
on that Friday night when we had that game. Uh, now we have moved across the street to the pond complex that now we can all truly enjoy. So it's been a long time coming. And I guess to paraphrase uh, Mr. Levy of the Buffalo Bills, where would you rather be than right here, right now? Go Panthers! Tim, Johnny, and Mike, I want to say a few words about Tim. I got to know him in the 1970s. He was a mentor of mine, the wrestling official. He was also a wrestling official. And we would ride up to start or uh, Sweet Home High School, where Western New York Wrestling Officials Association would meet. And we learned how to officiate. Dick was an outstanding wrestling official. And then he got a job at Roy Hart. And the rest is history. Dick, in my estimation, are three words that describe what Dick was all about. He cared. Caring was one of those words. He cared about his wrestlers. He cared about the program. He cared about everything he did. And he showed it. And I can prove it. Every morning, 7 o'clock, he was in the high school recruiting wrestlers. And at nighttime, oh, by the way, during the day, he'd have his uniform on as, a, as an officer of conservation and he'd walk to high school and then he'd put his arm around the kids and he'd say I'm going to make you a champion you're going to wrestle for me that's a true story and he did that constantly and then because he cared so much he would go to the teachers and get homework book reports whatever they owed and at practice, you make those kids get all their homework done or whatever they needed done. And he brought it to the teachers the next day. That's dedication. That's caring. Another word is trust. He's a very trustworthy person. He had to know Dick to understand that. He did everything the right way. He did what anybody would do and called it the right way to do it. So there's trust, caring, and the last one is commitment. Boy, was he committed. <coughs> you can't tell me of another coach who's committed to what he did as much as he did for both Reinhardt and Newfie and everything else he touched. So at this time, I'd like to bring Gretchen, Johnny, and Mike, whoever. You might bring a chair for Gretchen. I'm going to go over some, some of his accomplishments. I just want you to know. <laughs> Dick started wrestling as a coach in 1978 at Rutgers. When he finished up there, he had a record of 96 wins, 17 losses, and two ties. He won five consecutive nine Orleans championships in Eric. Cultivated in the record that I just mentioned of 96 wins. 
17 losses and two ties. He won five consecutive nine Orleans League championships. Well, Roy Hart did, took five wrestlers from New York, from Roy Hart to the New York State Championships. One was Louis Roselli, who is an Olympian today. He won two state champions in 1986 and 1988. In 1988, Dick established the New Fame Wrestling Club and became the assistant. And how he became the assistant, I'm very proud of. I don't mind telling you how it happened. I was at a wrestling tournament at Roy Hart. And Dick was not his usual self. If anybody knows what Dick did in the wrestling tournament, he sat on a chair, okay? And with his legs and his arms, he would wrap them around the chair as the kids wrestled. Sometimes he split them apart. <laughs> In one of my tournaments that I worked, he fell off the chair. <laughs> he was into the whole match. He had to see it, the contortions that he would get in. This day, in Roy Hart in a tournament, he wasn't himself. He just sat there. I went up to him and I said, Dick, what's wrong? And he said to me, Roy Hart is not going to have me back next year. He said, good, you're coming to Newfoundland. <laughs> and he did come to Newfoundland. And here's some of his accomplishments in Newfoundland. Dick established the Newfoundland Junior Wrestling Club and became assistant coach in Newfoundland with Doug Ames. A position he held to the year 2000. And he took over as the head coaching position while he held until 2007 when he retired. While in Newfane, Dick took seven sectional champions to the New York State Tournament. Here's their names Matt Dawson, Keith Jones, Alan Gerhardt, Dan Raffin, Tommy Lutcher, Jeremy Stoker. And our three time champion that you met tonight, Ryan Neal. Throughout his career, Dick coached a total of seven number one ranked teams, 17 Orleans League Champions teams, 96 Orleans League Champions, 13 state qualifiers, two state champions, seven state place winners three AA section championship teams, 20 AA section champions, and a coaching career of 294 wins, 43 losses, and four ties. New York State chapter of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame recognized Dick by inducting him into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. A well-earned career. An outstanding person. Congratulations, Dick. I know you can hear me. Well, on behalf of the Lang family, we want to say thank you very much to my mother, my brother, myself, to all that have reached out to us uh, over the last couple months. It's been pretty tough. Dad's been in, you know, he's in bad health. But uh, thank you for reaching out. We appreciate it. Dan loved his years in New Fame here. He loved being a coach in New Fame. He loved the students, the athletes, the support, and he cherished the friendships that he made here in New Fame. Dan believed athletics builds a work ethic, it builds character, it builds bonding which you carry on for life. He always said, it's never your last match out there. And he meant it in the professional world and for whatever you do for the rest of your life, it's never your last match. Dan was almost magical at getting a young kid to believe in himself. And to us, and we saw it all the time, and it was amazing to see he could take an average athlete get the kid to believe in himself and turn him into a winner on any level. 
He was a role model, he was a leader, he was kind, and he was an incredible motivator. He was loved and respected, which is a very difficult thing to do. And again, we want to say thank you to Jim and the panel here on, on behalf of the Lang family. Thank you very much, everybody. We mix two teams together because many of them play on both of the teams. I would like the following inaugural inductees to please come forward. Second baseman Bill Secor and third baseman Joe Sanasiro. While they're coming forward, the 1947 baseball team tied for the league championship with Wilson, <laughs> which earned them the right to compete in the Class B Section 6 tournament. They defeated North Collins and Randolph to become New Fame's first sectional champions. Then in 1948, the team went undefeated during the regular season winning the league championship and continued their unbeaten streak in the sectional tournament, defeating Woodlawn and Franklinville for their second consecutive Section 6 title. That was as far as they could go in those days as there was not a state tournament. Okay, Bill Secor is right here with me. Uh, Bill uh, has also been nominated for an indi individual inductee honor and hopefully will be inducted at our next ceremony. Besides playing on the sectional baseball championship teams, Bill was a captain on the football team for the first two years of New Fame football. They placed second in the Niagara Orleans League. He was a fellow that had a running back that had many large yardage games. When Bill played basketball, they were the NO and Erie champions for two consecutive seasons. He was also fourth in the league in scoring. And in basketball, he was known to be very fast and agile and breaking up opponents' plays. After graduation, Bill went on to the University of Rochester, where he was MVP in three sports and All-American in football. Upon graduation in 1953 from U of R, he was honored as the best all-around athlete at the University of Rochester. Bill spent, then spent two years in the Navy, and after his time in the service, became a stockbroker and now lives in Clarence. Bill, you and the team, Bill, you will be in the team pitcher and on the team plaque being placed on the Athletic Hall of Fame at the high school. And if you would like to share a couple comments or stories with it, we'd love it. Okay. See. Turn it on. Turn it on. Thank you very much for the honor. Uh, I will accept the award for all my team members who have passed away in our prison. Uh, it's hard to believe, but I'm thinking about the day and all the nice things that have been going on in New Fane Central. I all of a sudden realized that our baseball team in 1948 that won the sectional title was the first sectional title won by any New Fane team. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but it, it, it was celebrated as such, and I. I accept this honor for the team members deceased and our that are here. Thank you. Today's Grace Bible Church used to be the high school. And the ball diamond was behind the church where our home sits today. And Joe remembers trying to hit the windows out of that school in the right field. He was a very capable third baseman, 
and I also played football, and I hope you tell the same story about the, the Barker fellow. And it, and it wasn't uh, Marty Hornberg, so. <laughs> so, Joe, you will also be um, in the team picture on the team plaque, being placed on the Athletic Hall of Fame at the high school. So at this time, we'd like to, if you'd like to tell us a few stories. I came to New Penn in 1942. I was 10 years old at the time. And as you can see, I'm not a very big guy, and I never was. But I played on all three sports. I played baseball, basketball, and football. Our football team only had six men because we didn't have enough fellows came off the team to play. So I ended up being quarterback. We had a center, two ends, and two running backs. And uh, we didn't do too bad. I was quarterback. I couldn't do anything except pass the ball or give it to one of the running backs. And uh, in one of the games, we were playing Parker, and they had this uh, black fellow that was a good friend of ours named uh, Knowles. And he was about probably 180 pounds, and I was 110 pounds. <laughs> so this one guy, he was got the ball, kicked to him, and he got through everybody except me. And here was go post behind me, and here comes the running back. And I thought to myself, what in the world am I going to do? He's gonna, I mean, I, I can't stop him. He's too damn big. <laughs> so I decided, well, I'll fake it. I'll try to just make it look like I'm going to try to attack him. <laughs> well, I stand there, and he's coming in, coming in, coming in. And I'm getting ready to dodge him. He never dodged me. He just ran right through. <laughs> he hit me so hard, he knocked me on my foot. Down here, knocked me out. Court ran for a touchdown. And uh, after the game, I said to my just, what the world are you thinking about? I was just thinking about making a touchdown. That's all. <laughs> but it was, it was a fun time. And then baseball, I wasn't very good at all. But, uh, the only advantage I had was I was so short that my pitching, you know, if you get a strike, was very, very small, so the catcher and the pitcher would have a hard time pitching to me, so I'd get on base by walking numerous times. <laughs> but uh, it was fun. I mean, like I said, I just hold the bat there and hope I can't get it. I'm very solid guy. <laughs> but I just uh, had a good time. And in basketball, uh, I played uh, junior varsity, and I was captain of that. Like I said, I was so small, but I was rather quick. But the best player that we had on the basketball team at the time was Bill Secor. Bill really played basketball. He, uh, he was very fast and a good shot. And if anybody ever remembers the uh, old Memorial Hall in New Fame, where the church is, it was a very small hall, and it had pipes running across. So you got to make up your mind either shoot the ball over the pipe or under the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times you hit the pipe, and you know, so it would take the ball out. And the bad part about that place was, if anybody is old enough to remember, and I'm, I'm 90 years old, so I can remember pretty much. But as you walked in, it had a big grate. That's how they heated the place up. And this thing always got quite hot. So you always wanted to make sure that when you were running, you didn't want to step on that or get knocked down on it. But if you did, it was hot as heck, and you'd burn your, your seat. <laughs> but, uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a great time. And like I say, the only reason I ever made the team was because you paid so in such a small school. And they put an ad out that they needed some players for the teams. The same guys would come out with all three teams. And Coach Smith would say, okay, you're playing basketball, you're playing baseball, you're playing football. And none of us were very good, but we all had a good time. <laughs> 
six or seven letters, the school gave you the sweater. And uh, of course, then they had the letter on it. So I was lucky enough to earn a couple of sweaters. <laughs> in the team picture on the plaque in the high school. So first, uh, Linda Lemire representing catcher's uncle Russell Dickinson and father Bill Feast. Please come forward. Pete Gooding, representing second baseman Faber Gooding. Linda LaForest, representing outfielder Bob Janicki. Gary Cagles, representing outfielder James Cagles. Sue Keller Myers, representing pitcher and the 1947 captain, Don Keller. Don has also been nominated for an individual inductee honor and hopefully will be inducted at our next ceremony. In the 48 finals, he had uh, 12 strikeouts and had tryouts with the Reds, the Dodgers, the Giants, and also played in the minors. Don Canoe, second base, representing second baseman Jim Canoe. <laughs> Diane Eberhardt, representing first baseman Leroy Phipps. <laughs> Matt Ramsdell. Representing catcher Don Ramsdell. <laughs> Bill Rutland, representing first baseman Jerry Rutland. Gene Schweiger, representing outfielder and 1948 captain Berwin Schweiger. Pat Galutza, representing manager, manager Bob Taylor. <laughs> Roxanne Davis, representing infielder Ben Tucker. <laughs> Lisa Rosati and Debbie Journey, representing third baseman Don Wilson. Those that could not make it tonight are Albert Capen, who was a very good pitcher, Norm Cramp, outfielder, Robert Cramp, outfielder, Bill Mayle, second baseman, Bob Welch, second baseman, Jim Wheatley, outfielder, and coach J. Walter Smith. So if you would like to make a comment or tell a little story, uh, you're welcome to stay up here. If not, you may take your seat. Does anybody uh, want to get in? I'm representing my dad and my uncle. I want to send it to my Okay, so team and family members, uh, please, uh, if you would like pictures at the end of the program, we can, we can take pictures of the, the group that I just called. So thank you, uh, all of you, for joining us in New Fame tonight. I know I had a great time meeting with many of you and sharing stories. Thank you.